great and let's uh, move to the epilogue not wanting to spend a minute longer in this spore infested dust trap you managed to go down safely using the ingenious lift style platform installed at the far end of the mickey Diaz lair wow at the bottom an eerie silence surrounds the clearing your heroic actions and the slaying of the Mickey Tiad ended all imminent threat to the forest. Back at the village, everyone rejoices and cheers at the sight of your return and that of the captured villager. Many handshakes later, the grateful local council hands over the promised 150 gold pieces purse and wish you all the best in your future adventures. We have a pouch with 150 gold pieces. So what's happening? On the dusty road, as you leave the village, you also discover a quiver with two Uzbane-infused arrows. Add to these one additional arrow for each goblin free during the mission, if any. Oh! Hmm, we could have a chance to uh, free goblins. We didn't roll that result, I guess. Obviously left there to thank you for your help. Oh, nice goblins left us some treasure. It appears that the local goblin chieftain was pleased that you put an end to the abuse that the Mikitiad was exerting on his folk. Ah, oh, so kind. So two Uzbane infused arrows, what we have. We don't have a bow or a crossbow to use it, but these arrows are interesting. We note it and uh, we'll see if they will use it or not. Okay, if the party still has at least two clues, we have actually exactly two clues because we couldn't use any, a hero can learn the secret of the poultice. With this secret, after completion of any mission set in the outdoors, the character has a 3 in 6 chance of having found enough ingredients to fabricate one putrefying poultice with a resale value of 20 gold pieces. Alchemist reads and conservationists, we don't have these. Learning this minor secret does not give any XP roll. Okay, so this is a secret. Yes, of course, we spent the two clues because uh, it was clear in the rules that uh, these clues are specifically for this adventure, so we cannot use it anywhere else. So for the two clues, who is the one we can imagine that in outdoors will pick up herbs and uh, create remedies? Our cleric. Okay, we, we, we found many, many things here. At the end of the adventure, each hero must find out if any harm resulted from the long-term exposure to spores inside the giant tree. Okay, uh, uh, one thing. We have to roll when leaving the lair's room too. So now, one more roll if they are infected or not. It is versus level 8 because it is the 8th room. So Lenina is the only one who has a chance to save. It is eight. Okay, no more ticks for Lenina, but uh, the first tick for Paul, actually. Noted it here. And now Crystal has five ticks, and Bob has also five ticks. Let's see what does it mean. So at the end of the adventure, compare the number of sport tick marks each hero collected during the mission with the table on next page. Okay, so we have Paul with one. Let's start with him. Impervious. Gain one resilience to poison equivalent to the poison resistance skill. Ha! Huh. Okay, now Paul has poison resistance. I think it can be used once per adventure. And now Paul has a new skill. Wow, great. Okay, I guess the others won't be so lucky. So Paul is done. Let's see what happens with Lenina with three Sportix. No lasting effects. Okay. <laughs> At least nothing harmful. And Bob and Crystal with five ticks. Eye infection. You must pay for another poultice or the hero becomes blind and needs to retire. During the next adventure, the treated hero is at minus one on all rage attacks, including spells. I started to be happy that, oh, it's not a, not a big disadvantage, but for Crystal, minus one with spells. Mm. Okay, uh, do we have a poultice? Yes, Bob has a poultice, uh, what we've already chosen as a starting bonus. So Bob will use this one to save his eye. 
and uh, we have to pay 20 gold pieces for crystals pull this okay we will do it from the pouch we found now 130 gold pieces in it and uh, crystal will have minus one for all ranged attacks including spells for the next adventure this is a modification in uh, her skill it is just for one adventure i will remember i'm sure and uh, is it the end yes yes this is the end of the adventure okay great great so this was the mushroom menace from the lantern issue two and uh, yeah from corridor five to the corridor seven it looked like oh nothing interesting is here but before it and uh with this this amazing uh, final boss fight uh i think we did really really well mm, especially lenina coming back from death and uh there were some risky situations. I feel Bob is overpowered. Uh, and the, the problem was that uh, he he was fighting with the Mikitiad and all the others had to manage the nine fungi. Um, and actually the nine is the maximum number of the fungi folks the Mikitiad can have because we rolled the six and plus three. One more thing to do, roll for experience. So now we have to decide if Crystal or Paul will be the one trying to level up. And Crystal will be with, with this 3 per 1 health point. Is, it's totally not enough for anything. 4. Great. Great, great. Now we have a level 2 wizard with 4 maximum health. And actually she has only 2 health points at the moment. But the number of spells she can prepare for each adventure is 2 plus the level. So now we will have one more slot to use. I will put it to the fireball uh, and we'll see what will be the next adventure and which spells will she prepare. Thank you for joining me today. This was a very, very interesting uh, adventure. I really like this Mushroom Menace. I played it a uh, few times, but it is very interesting that uh, I didn't even remember that we can save goblins and uh, how it, how it uh, goes. So thank you and see you next time in our next adventure. Mm -hmm.